a very good day to all. Today we are going to start our last chapter on the simulation of oral process. So these are the learning outcome upon the completion of this uh, topic. Uh, you should be able to first apply a quiet skill to build a chemical process simulation. Uh, meaning that uh, in this particular chapter, you are not going to have any uh, new topic, but you are going to use the skill and also the knowledge that you have learned from the previous chapters and build a chemical process simulation in this chapter. So second outcome would be enter the minimum input required for the chemical process model and lastly you should be able to examine the results accordingly. So the best thing to uh, bring you through uh, this chapter is to uh, give you some case studies. So we have example from 5.1 here about the ammonia production plant. We have the open loop, meaning that we are not going to have recycled loop in this production plant. So ammonia is produced by reacting nitrogen from air with hydrogen. Hydrogen is usually obtained from the steam reforming of methane and nitrogen is obtained from the deoxygenated air. So the chemical reaction is shown below. So we have uh, nitrogen react with uh, hydrogen and uh, the product is ammonia. So here uh, our goal is to produce a simulation for the production of ammonia using X1 plus. So we have uh, the process flow diagram here. So we have uh, in the process we have compressor C100, then followed by a mixer M100. Uh, we have E100 to heat up the uh, reacting mixture before it is. Uh, entering the reactor R100 and then after the reaction we are going to have a cooler E101 to cool down the uh, reactor effluent before it is being separated into off gas and also liquid ammonia in a fresh drum. Uh, we have uh, FLSH100. So the information given here of course is uh, fit. Uh, information you have the temperature pressure and also the composition of the feed the syngas feed so this is syngas feed okay then we have uh, the specification for the respective uh, unit operation like uh, compressor here uh, is mentioning that it is an isentropic compressor and the discharge pressure is 271.4 atm so we have uh, the mixer M100 is mentioning that uh, no pressure drop across the mixer. We have also uh, the specification for the our heater E100 and then we have the specification for uh, the reactor R100. So if you look at the details of the specification for the reactor, we have the temperature and pressure and uh, the valid phase is uh, vapor liquid and the reaction stoichiometric coefficient uh, obviously from the chemical equation uh, one more of uh, nitrogen will react with three more of hydrogen uh, and this will be producing two more of ammonia okay. and uh, the fractional conversion uh, is 40% of the reactant nitrogen. Okay. So based on this information, we can also decide which reactor model we should use later on when we want to start the simulation. So we have the specification for the cooler as well, uh, E101 and the fresh drum. Okay. So let's analyze the problem. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is uh, we have to list down the component uh, when we want to start the simulation. So what would be the components involved uh, in the uh, ammonia production plant? So in the feed, uh, we are having uh, hydrogen, nitrogen, methane, argon, uh, carbon monoxide and also ammonia. So this is common because uh, um, Hydrogen is normally uh, taken from the uh, methane reforming process. That's why methane is there. 
CO is there. Okay, and nitrogen is normally taken from the uh, deoxygenated from the air. That's why argon is also there uh, together with nitrogen. So in terms of property method, uh, the recommended method here is RKSBM because uh, it is an equation of state that can cater the high temperature and high pressure process. And the unit system here recommended for you to use metric unit. Uh, the equipment model, so based on the uh, specification given for the unit operation just now in the question, so we can decide that heater um, for E100, we can use a heater model. Uh, R100, because the conversion is given, then we can actually use Astoy as the reactor model. For cooler, again, we can use a heater model. Heater model can uh, actually cover both uh, cooling process and also heating process. Okay. So for fresh drum, uh, we are going for a flash two because there is no uh, two liquid, two immiscible liquid involved in the process. So now let's solve the problem. So as usual, uh, you have to uh, start uh, the expand plus and uh, create a blank simulation. Uh, list the component, then you select the property method and run to generate the property before you shift to simulation tab. Okay. So once you are in the simulation tab, then uh, you are guided to a blank page for you to construct the flow sheet. Okay. And this is a flow sheet uh, constructed based on the uh, information given. Okay, so we have a first uh, compressor followed by mixer, uh, heater, and a reactor. Then after the reactor, we have a cooler to cool down the reactor reference before uh, the product is being separated into off gas and also the liquid ammonia. Okay, so once you have the flow sheet, uh, it means you, you have the complete uh, block and the block must be connected with the uh, stream then you name the block and also the stream accordingly okay. so you can actually change the name of the block and also the stream okay so next uh, once you have the flow sheet of course you have to enter the uh, fit specification so this one i will skip because uh, you have actually gone through the um, the process before this I, I i guess you must be very familiar with this then after the uh, fit specification then we move to block specification so here you have to include the uh, specification for all the block okay. and what is new for you here is a compressor so that's why i i show you how to uh, include the specification for the compressor so you have uh, yeah, as given in the question is an isentropic uh, compressor so you have to choose isentropic and the model is compressor you have to choose compressor because the same model can also be used as a uh, uh, turbine for turbine simulation so just choose uh, isentropic and uh, state the discharge pressure as 271.4 uh, atm so the next block here, uh, which is new for you, is the mixer. So as stated in the question, uh, there's no pressure drop across the mixer. So make sure the pressure in the pressure column here, zero, is put as the answer. Okay. So once you have uh, all the block information, then uh, I think all the information uh, required is uh, inserted. Uh, what you need to do next is, uh, of course, you can run the simulation. Uh, if not, then you can just click uh, the next button here. You have next button here. Then you'll be guided uh, to run the simulation. Uh, of course, uh, the results will be available without error once you run the simulation. And you can check the stream result. Okay, the stream result here. You, you click uh, stream, stream summary for all stream so this table will be shown okay of course uh, you can also export this uh, stream table to the flow sheet 
or to an uh, Excel file. So if you send the uh, stream table to Flowsheet, then this is how does it look like. So the stream table is just below the uh, flow sheet that you have uh, constructed just now. Right. So this is uh, for example 5.1. Okay. So the next we have uh, example 5.2. So again, it's an ammonia production plant, but now we are going to have a recycle loop. We are going to close the loop. Okay. Uh, this process produces uh, two outlet stream. So as uh, the process in example 5.1, we know that uh, after the fresh drum, we are having the liquid ammonia product and as well as the off gas. So the two outlet stream. Okay. And now, uh, in the vapor stream, it is actually still containing a lot of uh, unreacted hydrogen and also nitrogen. And we would like to uh, capture and also recycle this unreacted material back to the reactor in order to minimize the cost and maximize the product yield. Okay, the information given here is uh, in order to recycle the some of the off gas uh, back to the reactor or back to the process, you need to have splitter S100. Okay. For splitter, you have to enter value of 0.01, that means 1%. We are going to push 1% and recycle the 99% back to the process. And for compressor, we have uh, another compressor, C101. Uh, this is a compressed uh, uh, of gas before it can be recycled back to the process because the process is of high pressure, right? Uh, and after the fresh drum, we are having a relatively low pressure stream. That's why we need to further compress it before it can be uh, pushed back to the process. Okay, again, it's an isentropic type and the discharge pressure is 271 uh, RTN. Okay, now uh, let's analyze the uh, uh, problem, example uh, 5.2. So the simulation can actually build up uh, from the simulation file of uh, example 5.1 by just adding the speeder and also compressor. And uh, the equipment model used should be uh, F-split for the splitter, S100. And for compressor, as usual, we are going to use the compressor model. So once you have uh, all the information, then you have to uh, include the uh, new equipment and also new stream into the uh, flow sheet in example 5.1. Okay. We have uh, splitter and also the compressor. Okay. So the additional stream would be, uh, you have the push line, okay, and you have uh, S7 here, stream S7. Uh, that is a stream before you uh, go to the compressor, C101. Okay. We have C101 here. And uh, we have S6, Okay, the outlet stream of the C101, the high pressure recycled gas before it is uh, recycling back to the process. Okay. So now, uh, with the new block, of course you have to include the uh, uh, block specification. So the first one would be the splitter. For splitter, you are asked to include uh, 1%, the split fraction of 0 0.01 for the push stream. That means you are going to push 1% and recycle 99%. Uh, 99% will go to S7. Okay. And once you have all the information, uh, of course, after you include the uh, uh, splitter specification, you have to include the compressor specification. Then you have enough information to run the simulation. So once you run the simulation, these are the messages given to you. It's saying that, uh, yeah, the, uh, 
the solver did not converge and the simulation results are available with error. Right. Uh, so, how do we uh, get rid of the problem of non-convergence? So let's troubleshoot the problem. Okay. So the error due to non-convergence may be attributed to the following reasons. So the first one is inappropriate numerical method for convergence. And the second reason could be insufficient uh, number of iteration. So let's check uh, what are the methods used in the solver. So if you check in the control panel, um, it's saying that a Westin method is used in the solver to solve this simulation. Okay. Actually, Westin method is a good method to use when trying to converge a single recycle stream and stream SA is an appropriate stream to uh, attempt to converge. That means uh, actually Westin method is good enough to solve a process with recycle stream. Okay? So the reason of inappropriate numerical method may, may not be valid here. Of course, uh, other than checking the method used in the control panel, you can also check the method used under the convergence uh, folder. There's a convergence folder. You go to convergence option and default. So if you check here uh, under the test column, Western method is always used to uh, uh, solve the problem. Okay. So if you look at the, uh, the definition or the description for Westin method. Westin is the default convergence method for system generated tear convergence block and it is usually an, uh, the quickest and most reliable method for tear stream convergence. Okay? Meaning that uh, Westin method is actually a good enough method to solve a process with single recycle stream. So if it's not due to the convergence uh, numerical method, then it may be due to the number of iteration. Okay. So now let's check whether uh, the reason of uh, insufficient number of iteration is valid or not. So you can, uh, before you change the number of iteration, you can actually check the minimum error or tolerance uh, with the number of iteration. So in order to have this table as shown in the figure, so this is a table, you can go to uh, yeah, under the convergence folder, you have a solver, right? And you go to results, okay? And uh, you have a table here, number of iteration and its corresponding min maximum error and also tolerance. So you can click custom and uh, select the x and y axis then you can plot the graph so this is a graph uh, given this is a default one okay once you plot the graph uh, yeah actually based on the graph as the number of iterations uh, increases the maximum error or tolerance are actually reducing okay to make the figure more meaningful we change the range of the axis the y-axis uh, minimum negative 5000 and maximum 5000 of course in order to change the range you have to make sure the grade interval is less than uh, 5000 so we put 500 here for the grade interval so once you have set this you plot the graph again then yeah this is a more meaningful graph and you can see clearly here that as the number of iteration increases the uh, maximum error or tolerance is actually approaching zero so meaning that the method is actually appropriate but the number of iteration we have to increase it in order to get convergence okay, okay. so what we do here is you can uh, again under the convergence folder go to option go to method and under Westin method you can change the 
maximum flow sheet evaluation from 30 to 50. The default one is 30. Now we change it to 50. Okay. So once you change it to 50, reset the results. Reset the simulation result just now. And run the simulation again. So once you run the simulation again, you can now get the results without error. Okay. And yeah, the simulation has not given you any warnings and also error. Okay. Meaning we have actually solved the problem of non-convergence by increasing the number of iteration from 30 to 50. So let's take a five minutes break before we proceed further to other example. Thank you very much.